Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about anxiety disorders. This is going to continue my quest to have a good chunk of podcasts, uh, maybe make a playlist. This will go into several that have to do with mental disorders and mental uh, illnesses. In a general sense, what would I regret if I walked away from the channel and said, you know, I need a break or do things a little differently. I felt, oh, you know what? I've never really finished doing a real good chunk on the mental illnesses and disorders. And I chose to use more of an educational site than uh, opinion pieces. So there will not be a section like I usually credit the person who wrote the article. And in this, it's just from the National Institute of Mental Health. And I check every time. I want to make sure I would give credit to someone who wrote it, but like I said, this is more of a educational or curriculum thing they send out, I think. You can go to the site, the link will be in the description. If I forget, let me know. Usually I read them word for word and I interject my own two cents here and there. But most of these have been from the National Institute of Mental Health, and like I said, they're more of an educational, informative thing than someone doing a, you know, opinion piece on it. And I wanted to stick with that. This will be probably a little bit repetitive in certain sections as since it's from the same site with educational purpose, it goes into certain sections at the end like um, clinical trials and things like that, but we'll get there. Let's start with the beginning. What is anxiety? Occasional anxiety is a normal part of life. Many people worry about things such as health, money, or family problems. But anxiety disorders involve more than temporary worry or fear. For people with an anxiety disorder, the anxiety does not go away and can get worse over time. The symptoms can interfere with daily activities such as job performance, schoolwork, and relationships. There are several types of anxiety disorders, including generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and various phobia-related disorders. What are the signs and symptoms of anxiety? Generalized anxiety disorder. It usually involves a persistent feeling of anxiety or dread, which can interfere with daily life. It is not the same as occasionally worrying about things or experiencing anxiety due to stressful life events. People living with GAD experience frequent anxiety for months, if not years. Symptoms of GAD, GAD, include feeling restless, wound up, or on edge, being easily fatigued, having difficulty concentrating, being irritable, having headaches, muscle aches, stomach aches, or unexplained pains, difficulty controlling feelings of worry, having sleep problems such as difficulty falling or staying asleep, <laughs> right? it's, it's so interesting as so many of these disorders they overlap in certain areas panic disorder people with panic disorder have frequent and unexpected panic attacks panic attacks are sudden periods of intense fear discomfort or a sense of losing control even when there is no clear danger or trigger not everyone who experiences a panic attack will develop panic disorder during a panic attack, a person may experience pounding or racing heart, sweating, trembling or tingling, chest pain, feeling of impending doom, feelings of being out of control. People with panic disorder often worry about when the next attack will happen and actively try to prevent future attacks by avoiding places, situations, or behaviors they associate with panic attacks. Panic attacks can occur as frequently as several times a day or as rarely as a few times a year. Social Anxiety Disorder is an intense, persistent fear of being watched and judged by others. For people with social anxiety disorder, the fear of social situations may feel so intense that it seems beyond their control. For some people, this fear may get in the way of going to work, attending school, or doing everyday things. People with social anxiety disorder may experience blushing, sweating, or trembling, pounding of racing heart, 
or apparently or raising heart, stomach aches, rigid body posture or speaking with an overly soft voice, difficulty making eye contact or being around people they don't know, feeling of self-consciousness or fear that people will judge them negatively. Hello? <laughs> uh, Phobia-related disorders. A phobia is an intense fear of or aversion to specific objects or situations. Although it can be realistic to be anxious in some circumstances, the fear people with phobias feel is out of proportion to the actual danger caused by the situation or object. People with phobias, a phobia, may have an irrational or excessive worry about encountering the feared object or situation. Take active steps to avoid the feared object or situation. Experience immediate intense anxiety upon encountering the feared object or situation. Endure unavoidable objects and situations with intense anxiety. Mm, that's a... Uh, that's just something I can imagine would be uh, so, so stressful. Like if you put, like, let's say someone's, it's a fear of, uh, I guess you could just say like a spider, right? Like you can just put it in a jaw somewhere and keep it near them and it would, I don't know, I mean, it's like torture, but because some people have to, you know, you go to work, you got to do what you got to do and whatever situation or object, you know, this is, uh, no, it's a little... I don't know if I have experienced things like this. Well, situations, maybe, yeah, but I don't know about an object. I'll continue. Specific phobias, sometimes called simple phobias. As the name suggests, people who have a specific phobia have an intense fear of or feel intense anxiety about specific types of objects or situations. Some examples of specific phobias include the fear of flying, heights, Specific animals such as spiders, dogs, or snakes. <laughs> it's so funny that I... Oh, yeah, I do kind of read them. It's just like some in the back of my fucking stupid head. Uh, animals such as spiders, dogs, or snakes. Receiving injections, blood. Social anxiety disorder, previously called social phobia. People with social anxiety disorder have a general intense fear of or anxiety towards social or performance situations. They worry that actions or behaviors associated with their anxiety will be negatively evaluated by others, leading them to feel embarrassed. This worry often causes people with social anxiety disorder to avoid social situations. Social anxiety disorder can manifest in a range of situations, such as within the workplace or the school environment. Agoraphobia People with agoraphobia have an intense fear of two or more of the following situations. Using public transportation, being in open spaces, being in enclosed spaces, standing in line or being in a crowd, being outside of the home alone. Hmm. I don't have an intense fear. I just have a dislike. Like, a, I don't know. Because I guess two of them would be... I could pick two of those that I don't, not, I don't like, but I don't know about intense fear. People with agoraphobia often avoid these situations, in part because they think being able to leave might be difficult or impossible in the event they have a panic-like reactions or other embarrassing symptoms. In the most severe form of agoraphobia, an individual can become housebound. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I could, I could see... I can understand and relate to certain things, but I wouldn't say it fits me in a way. You know, not that I'm, you know, uh, label myself as someone with anxiety disorder, but I'm sure it's part of my fucking nonsense to some extent. If it's not, you know, coming out of a depression thing or whatever, I've done like six of these now so far. Like, and there's like a lot of things that carry over to each other. Uh, separation anxiety disorder. Separation anxiety disorder is often thought of as something that only children deal with. However, adults can also be diagnosed with separation anxiety disorder. People with separation anxiety disorder fear being away from the people they are close to. They often worry that something bad might happen to their loved ones while they are not together. This fear makes them avoid being alone or away from their loved ones. They may have had bad dreams 
about being separated or feel unwell when separation is about to happen. Hmm, you know, there's so many here that seem like contradictory to each other, but that's the human brain, I guess. Hmm, there's a little section here I'll read. It says, selective mutism. A somewhat rare disorder associated with anxiety is selective mutism. Selective mutism occurs when people fail to speak in specific social situations despite having normal language skills. Selective mutism occurs, usually occurs before the age of five and is often associated with extreme shyness, fear of social embarrassment, compulsive traits, withdrawal, clinging behavior, or temper tantrums. People diagnosed with selective autism are also, or often also diagnosed with many or with other anxiety disorders. Hmm, I guess most before five, it just seems like a normal thing. I've also talked about how, like, t t in today's day and age, the spectrum of, like, autism, like, every human being almost falls under it. It's just, it feels silly to say, like, because I haven't done a deep dive on it, like, so I'm, like, informed opinion. But back in the day, you wouldn't be labeled autism for a certain things you do now. I mean, I think it might be a good thing that, you know, with more knowledge about the brain and the understanding of how, or how fucking you know neuron shit works so i don't know it just seems a little weird what are the risk factors for anxiety researchers are finding out that both genetic and environmental factors contribute to the risk of developing an anxiety disorder by the way that's everything now <laughs> almost every phobia type thing will sort of hint that it's Genetic and environment, like just like everything, mostly. The risk factors of each type of anxiety disorder vary. However, some general risk factors include shyness or feeling distressed or nervous in new situations in childhood. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I can, uh, I can see that. Exposure to stressful and negative life or environmental events. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's add that on there, too. A history of anxiety and other mental disorders in biological relatives. Yeah, okay. Uh, anxiety symptoms can be produced or aggravated by some physical health conditions such as thyroid problems or heart arrhythmia, caffeine or other substance medications. Uh, that, seems, that seems really co common sense, okay. Practical. Uh. If you think you may have an anxiety disorder... Getting a physician examination, a physical examination from a healthcare provider may help them diagnose your symptoms and find the right treatment. How is anxiety treated? Anxiety disorders are generally treated with psychotherapy, medication, or both. Another thing that's kind of the same with almost everything, all these illnesses and disorders. There are many ways to treat anxiety disorder, and you should work with a healthcare provider to choose the best treatment for you. Psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, or talk therapy, can help people with anxiety disorders. To be effective, psychotherapy must be directed at your specific anxieties and tailored to your needs. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, is an example of one type of psychotherapy that can help people with anxiety disorders. It teaches people different ways of thinking, behaving, and reacting to situations to help you feel less anxious and fearful. CBT has been well studied and is the gold standard for psychotherapy. Exposure therapy is a CBT method that is used to treat anxiety disorders. Exposure therapy focuses on controlling or confronting the fears underlying an anxiety disorder to help people engage in activities they have been avoiding. Exposure therapy is sometimes used along with relaxation exercises. Again, I'll go to my playlist. Uh, what is it? I uh, who is Joseph F. Also, I do the, I do a little thing. It was one of my first ones. Today, probably fucking horrible, but I do a um, thing on my version of meditation, breathing exercises that work as a cognitive behavior therapy in a way to take in uh thoughts and feelings recognize your body's reaction to them in a breathing method that lets you go neutral and deal with what you have to deal with if they're negative or it's a positive and this seems like a um 
you know, a very close uh, relative to that type of thing. And obviously, I'm not the father of psycho- psychotherapy. But, you know, for my 30-something years of dealing with this shit, I wanted to make a um, relatively easy way to give people the tools to help themselves to some extent. And that was the whole purpose of it. Yes, it's fine to go to your, your healthcare provider, but I live in Brooklyn, New York, and just the mentality, just the general understanding of things is worldwide, I guess, in that stigma of going to a, a therapist in that sense. Uh, just that whole thing that, you know, we can go over for fucking hours talking about. But as someone who has been diving into this, like I said, I don't have a degree, but to give someone a tool that they can adapt and mold to help themselves. So it's, you know, something you can convey in a couple of, you know, I'm going to say sessions, but, you know, 15 to 20 minutes here or there. And I implore people to find their own coping things. Yes, talk to a physical uh, a physician, yes. But I, I do understand how people work, the world, and affairs going, moving in and out. Another thing I wanted to do is a workout routine with only the space you work in, or you, the space you get ready for work in. So when you wake up in the morning in bed, what stretches to do and um, things to get ready. When you stand up to get ready to go brush your teeth, like the whole thing would be catered to like this day and age. And that's what my breathing and meditation exercises before. Like you can do the breathing exercise while you get ready for work. You practice it all day. And it builds up something that becomes part of your natural, you know, instincts in it. Uh, the way you don't constantly think about walking to work. Anyway, you can practice these things. just like working out. And Anyway, I'm blabbing now. I don't even know what the fuck I was up to. Uh, acceptance and commitment therapy. Another treatment option for some anxiety disorders is acceptance and commitment therapy, ACT. ACT takes a different approach than CBT to negative thoughts. It uses strategies such as mindfulness and goal setting to reduce discomfort and anxiety. Compared to CBT, ACT is a newer form of psychotherapy treatment, so less data are available on its effectiveness. Medication. Medication does not cure anxiety disorder, but can help relieve symptoms. Healthcare providers, such as a psychiatrist or primary care provider, can prescribe medication for anxiety. Some states also allow psychologists who have received specialized training to prescribe psychiatric medications. The most common classes of medications used to combat anxiety disorders are antidepressants. Anti-anxiety medications such as... Oh, shit, I was doing so fucking good benzodiazepines benzodiazepines and beta blockers I went through this whole fucking thing I was doing good my other one I fucked up I, I know that oh was it the gender disorder oh it was brutal brutal uh, antidepressants antidepressants are used to treat depression but they can also be helpful for treating anxiety disorders they may help improve the way your brain uses certain chemicals that control mood or stress. You may need to try several different antidepressant medicines before finding the right one that improves your symptoms and has manageable side effects. And, you know, they should really put manageable side effects in blue and highlight it as a link. Because you talk to anybody, again, in Brooklyn, New York, whatever, it just... You know what the struggle is going to be and what the problems will be. Oh, medication makes me feel this way. I don't feel myself. It's, and this is hard. You got to you gotta put the effort in on both sides. And you, you, your psychiatrist, care, healthcare worker, your honesty, going back. And I call it the cocktail, like whatever, you know, whatever they're going to try in different dosage. It's tough. Hmm. Antidepressants can take several weeks to start working. So it's important to give the medication a chance before react, reaching a conclusion about its effectiveness. If you begin taking antidepressants, do not stop taking them without the help of a healthcare provider. Your provider can help you slowly and safely decrease your dose. 
Stopping them abruptly can cause withdrawal symptoms. See, this whole thing bothers me in that sense. And I don't like uh, telling people not to get on antidepressants and stuff, but the whole thing just... Um, you read studies and real decent studies about that. And I don't like where it seems to go, but look, this is the part of learning, and it's not like we have mustache-twirling villains, you know, trying to help people in fucking psychiatry offices and therapists, so... In some cases, children, teenagers, and adults younger than 25 may experience increased suicidal thoughts or behavior when taking antidepressant medications. See? Already. Especially in the first few weeks after starting or when the doses change. Because of this, people of all ages taking antidepressants should be watched closely, especially during the first weeks of treatment. You know how... It's not, you know, I, I stopped and interjected my own two thoughts. And again, yes, I pre-read some of these things. Most of them, I might have three uh, of these set up and decide which one I'm going to do when I'm doing my recording and if I'm going to do bulk recordings. So I get a little, it's not like I remember everything, but I'm sure it's in the back of my mind. But this is scary and it's worrying. How many people are just out in their own apartment and they've moved away and they got... You know, a new circle of friends that they're not so dependent on. Who's watching you? Now, this is a great day and age for certain things like video calls and stuff. So that's beautiful and amazing. You know, you can have a camera in your baby's room, watch them with a microphone. I mean, I guess there are ways even better now to communicate. Well, back in my day, it's like pen pal. You had to write someone a letter and send it in the mail, right? Then... But you know, I'm not that fucking old. I'm 52, but you get the point. Did why I did have a pen pal, which was fucking ridiculous. Now someone can hold up their phone and stop a war in some country. They can just stream it live. But um, I'm getting off point here. That it just talks about what antidepressants can do to certain people and what the potential is, and to watch them closely. That this is that's another that's just worrisome to begin with. Anti-anxiety medications. Anti-anxiety anti meditation medications. <laughs> it should be anti-anxiety meditations, right? Can help reduce symptoms of anxiety, panic attacks, or extreme fear and worry. The most common anti-anxiety medications are called benzodiazepines. <laughs> Although benzodiazepines are sometimes used... See, this is fucked up because I was proud that I got through it, and it's just, now it just wants to say it every five seconds. <sighs> Although benzodiazepines are sometimes used as first-line treatments for generalized anxiety disorder, they have both benefits and drawbacks. Benzodiazepines are effective in, in relieving anxiety and take effect more quickly than antidepressant medications. However, some people build up a tolerance to these medications and need higher and higher doses to get the same effect. Some people even become dependent on them. To avoid these problems, healthcare providers usually prescribe benzodiazepines for short periods of time. If people suddenly stop taking benzodiazepines, they have <laughs> they may have withdrawal symptoms or their anxiety may return. Therefore, benzodiazepines. You know, I had, I had a friend text me after one of these things. Like after it was put out, <laughs> and he's like, he's in the medical field in, in a sense, you know, in the a hospital, and he, he sends me correct pronunciations. <laughs> so I blow through these, some of these things, pat myself on the back, thinking I, I nailed these fucking words. But he, then he'll come back and tell me, you know, because he's got like letters in front of his name tag, that's important, you know, like EKG, whatever the fuck. Anyway. Oh, fuck. There, therefore, benzodiazepines should be tapered off slowly. Your provider can help you slowly and safely decrease your dose. I hate all this shit. Like, to, to, to take something that doesn't make me me, which is why I think I love marijuana, pot, but it's legal in New York now. 
That was me before I ever smoked pot. That was me after I smoked. It's, it's just me. And it's, it's, it's a wonder drug, in my opinion. Get all your kids. Let's just get them all fucking... <laughs> Flintstone vitamins should be like Cheech and Chong vitamins. Like little bits of THC in it. Fuck yeah, I do it. Fuck, I don't give a fuck. I don't care no more. I'm so fucking done. Beta blockers. Although beta blockers are most often used to treat high blood pressure, they can help relieve the physical symptoms of anxiety, such as a rapid heartbeat, shaking, trembling, and blushing. These medications can help people keep physical symptoms under control when taken for short periods. They can also be used as needed to reduce acute anxiety, including to prevent some predictable forms of performance anxieties. You know, it's funny that I, upon reading this, it kind of fits in with somebody who was telling me they were having, they were shaking and stuff. But now I'm thinking about it, blushing could be an anxiety thing and I want to mentally pick a note of that. Is there a pencil? I usually have a pencil somewhere. Choosing the right medication. Some types of drugs may work better for specific types of anxiety disorders. So people should work closely with a healthcare provider to identify which medication is best for them. Certain substances such as caffeine, some over-the-counter cold medicines, illicit drugs, and herbal supplements may aggravate the symptoms of anxiety disorders or interact with prescribed medication. People should talk with a healthcare provider so they can learn which substances are safe and which to avoid. Choosing the right medication, medication dose, and treatment plan should be done under an expert's care and should be based on a person's needs and their medical situation. You and your provider may try several medicines before finding the right one. Now, again, just think of the... what all, This last two paragraphs, these last two sections, are way more than, than it reads, because you're talking about change, someone's life has to change. And I, I, I should talk about this more on some of these... I do a lot of them now, right? Six of them or whatever it is. This isn't an easy thing for people, like... You you want somebody to go constantly to their doctors and work with them and try to work with them because this medication is... You, you know, you, then you're talking about how long does it take? I was reading about, um, what was it, schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Like, when you take medications, it could take up to, like, nine weeks for things to settle into effect, which is why I think they're saying here some of the medications will work faster than antidepressants, but, you know, we, then you have to worry about the side... like. Oh, my heart goes out to people. I don't know if it's going out to myself, but this is just, you know. Oh, man. I don't even know where I am. All right. Uh, hmm. Choosing the right medication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Support groups. Some people with anxiety disorders might benefit from joining a self-help or support group and sharing their problems and achievements with others. By the way, I totally recommend it. Some people are just like, in, in, in a weird way, don't want to be helped in a way, but will go and watch and listen and fill other needs at the same time as getting a support group. Like, people are in this with you. They all go through the same things. You hear the stories that are the same. So, yeah, I highly recommend that. Support groups are available both in person and online. And that's right there is fucking incredible. Oh, man. Just in my own awareness of this shit, stoned down my head, murdering the English language. I, would, I, I bet you I was alive for the day where someone added available in person and online. Like, there would be no online. Oh, that's just so hopeful in that sense. However, any advice you receive from a support group member should be used cautiously and does not replace treatment recommendations from a healthcare provider. Right, so if you see me at one of these things and I'm like, hey, meditate, breathe, I hope folk, right? Yeah, well, question everything, go ask your healthcare provider. You still want to keep in touch with that. Stress management techniques. 
stress management techniques such as exercise, mindfulness, and meditation also can reduce anxiety symptoms and enhance the effects of psychotherapy. See, now I combine meditation, breathing exercises with a type of psychotherapy or cognitive behavior therapy. That's why. You can learn more about how these techniques benefit your treatment by talking to a health, talking with a healthcare provider. All right, and here we go. I'll try to breeze through these things pretty fast. How can I find clinical trial for anxiety? Clinical trials are research studies, <laughs> research studies that uh, look at new ways to prevent, detect, or treat diseases and conditions. The goal of clinical trials is to determine if a new test or treatment works and is safe. Although individuals may benefit from being part of a clinical trial, participants should be aware that the primary purpose of a clinical trial is to gain new scientific knowledge so that others may be better helped in the future. So basically, you're having these problems, you're documenting them, you're getting on these clinical trials with some new approach, some new medication. It might not work for you, but you could be helping the next generation, the, 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 the next people who grow up in this crazy dog-eat-dog -dog world. So, I would say it's a great thing in a, in a general sense. And I'm not talking about the outliers. Yes, there's some fucking twisted, mustache twirling villain doing his shit somewhere that's looking to game the system, make money. All right, whatever. Researchers at NIMH and around the country conduct many studies with patients and healthy volunteers. We have new and better treatment options today because of what clinical trials uncovered years ago. Be part of tomorrow's medical breakthroughs. Talk to your healthcare provider about clinical trials, their benefits and risks, and whether one is right for you. To learn more or find a study, visit, and here we go, there's some links, blue. Again, a lot of these articles will have highlighted links or words and then a trail together. They're highlighted blue. Some sites is different. And that'll lead you to another website, a... Uh, uh, more information on a certain thing and it's littered throughout the article so if it mentions one thing you can hit that and look and get your you know informed opinion about something else so this section here has a bunch of links where can i learn more about anxiety and then we got free brochures and shareable resources all links that you can hit it describes the brochures things you can do download online and look at online uh OC things for like ocd um, and the little things we talked about, like certain sections, like panic disorders, social, you can get information just on those. Again, in the article, you can do a deeper dive and have, like I do sometimes, five or six tabs opened up because each one leads you deeper uh, and deeper into an understanding of at least the, you know, the little bits and pieces that we're talking about, not uh, getting a degree in psychiatry or clinical, being coming to clinical physician, whatever, whatever, psychologist, multimedia, and here's a bunch of links, I implore people, hit those links, anything that catches your fancy, you might want to know a different um, uh, article with someone uh, discussing coping with the pandemic and school re-entry stress, these things are real, you know, this isn't just, you know, Fox News telling half truth, or, th or actually like a quarter truth, and making it seem like this is bad or mass, whatever. There's a whole articles here, and it's a good way to get different perspectives on things. Although I always implore everybody, there's always a, a slant to things. You'll get a, you know, there's always that incentive to have clickbaity things, which is why I kind of went with more of an educational thing from a medical place, than, which is my usually go-to is, uh, you know, like an article on something, but it's someone's opinion about something in general. Um, federal resources, uh, it's only one link, research and statistics. You can look at the journal articles and statistics for anxiety disorder. Uh, it also tells you when this was last reviewed, which was April 2023. And, and they actually interacts with you in the sense at the bottom of the page it's was this page useful is there anything we can do to improve this page and you know these little things are why like i think i started choosing this site again i'll open up a bunch of them and some will just be like i said a, a, an opinion piece like you know uh mary smith is just 
talking about anxiety. She has, you know, a degree or something, and she's talking about like case histories or something. Yeah. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but again, this is my um, continued quest to get as many, or I don't know, I don't want to say like the most popular. <laughs> There's no way to say the most generalized ones that people can resonate with and associate with. We all have people in our lives, uh, friends, family, loved ones. Uh, I'm sure people who just work with acquaintances. And there's a struggle out there. It happens in the brain. That's where it starts with everything, despite people might think. And the genetic environment. Are people totally to blame? Is Eventually, can everything be solved with a pill? You, you try to think of it like that. Um... Someone goes on, there's a famous story, guy goes on a killing spree, but he leaves a note behind, there's something wrong with me. They chain, they check him, and he has a tumor pressing against a certain part of his brain that negates, like, um, you know, certain emotions and thoughts. And you have no remorse, you don't think properly. It could everything be that. And I think eventually it will go, we'll go there, we'll know, you know. And I don't believe it'll be like, if someone takes a spoonful of this uh, go-go juice and... Everybody becomes copies of themselves. No, I think it's it's about finding that you have this certain amount of synapses that need to be connected in a certain way, and it's you know other areas aren't being you know, fed a certain thing. Anyway, this is me rambling on, um, doing uh, mental health type education things right now. In this section, I'm doing. Uh, the mental illnesses and disorders. And that's another thing. I apologize if I'm calling your thing something else. I'm just some pothead from Brooklyn who's murdering the English language. Feeling a little stressed out about his own channel and would I keep doing it? And I'm just looking to look back and say I wanted to get a chunk of these things out. My, my TV and um, movie shit is really fun to do because the enjoyment I get from like you know good entertainment is conveyed in a way better here it's just me reading fucking articles and just destroying the English language but my goal is information helpful um, can we talk about it more family members you can recognize certain things maybe someone you know you love daily is you know having a hard time is is it a good friend who could look into certain things and just get a general information. You don't have to go back to school and get a degree, but if it's proven that friends who are good listeners help and enhance each other's lives, maybe learning a little bit more about a certain thing could make it even better. Well, I think I got through this pretty good. I've been having a thing where I'm trying to do bulk of them and get around um, the week to week thing that might be better too if I can have I can still put them out on Sundays but as my friend was telling me wait for a day where it feels the creativity, the excitement's there and then maybe do more than one get it, get, get more than because I used to do that I used to do three a week and you know it was like Monday, Wednesday, Sunday that type of thing but I had like seven in the bank which is what I call them you know and I guess it has to do with, you know, what's going on in your life, with the job, work, all that, right? And with me, I've explained, if it's anybody wants to know, has any type of thing, um, I might talk about the tools I have and um, the things I recommend or I would help people with and teach them in a sense. But we all get overwhelmed. We all have that one thing too many that just kind of breaks through your defenses and makes you like rebuild your Lego set or you know it just crumbles the foundation you gotta rebuild it and I think that's that whole theme about getting knocked down and getting up I have a friend who inspires me in that way I admire her um, courage her um, tenacity or perseverance and yeah you'll have your moments where you just lose it and you wanna you know you wanna lay your head on someone's shoulder and let it out and maybe you can be their friend you can learn a little bit get a little bit of information if it's not this disorder it's schizophrenia or depression you don't have to listen to me flub everything and sound like a 
a maniac. You could just look at the description in the, you know, all the links that I have in the description and just hit those links and read the articles for yourself. And I call them articles now, but I don't know. The more I'm looking at this uh, NIMH thing, National Institute of Mental Health, I'm sort of appreciating, because I used to have a thing where if I'm looking at a subject, let's say it's aliens or whatever, you you have a three-click rule and you always want to get to a point where there's a peer-reviewed study or at least a study where you can flub things and kind of, you know, just understand that someone did an effort and did a a meta academical analysis of it, right? Where in the article, they they mentioned this analysis seven times, but you can never find it. And you're sort of doubting what this material is and who has it and this conspiracy. So in a general sense, even with mental health, I don't want to put out an article piece and track down the person's credentials or, you know, make sure I want to make sure some of those links work. They, they go to legitimate stuff. Anyway, I don't know. Um, I just like to get it out there. It's not a stigma. Everybody has it. Friends, family, loved ones, we're all dealing with this stuff. And I guess that's where I'll end this. Um, I think I still got a couple more on my list at least, and a couple more I'm thinking about doing because I feel weird like doing a couple of mental health things, disorders, illnesses, and then leaving something out that could help somebody or is, you know, important to them. So I'm doing that now and. I still have things like, you know, I want to Picard. I gotta fucking watch that god awful show. Like, two fucking seasons of god awfulness. And I want to watch it because I love Star Trek. And my excitement, disappointment, Obi Wan, like things like that. Like, I do want to convey these things in some way. But I might take my friend's advice and just wait for the moment. Don't let it stress me out. Because, hey, you know, I'm here to say I got these issues too. As a matter of fact, you might be able to nail me for almost every fucking thing I did so far. Or maybe not schizophrenia. Although I purposely might manifest that because I have constructs and I constructs that I talk in my head and I go through adventures and write stories and do it's a craziness in there. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. I love you all. Take care.